Well, hello, friends. I bring you greetings on this beautiful day and praise God for the gift of this day and for our time to be together in the Word. So we continue our journey. We're getting into chapter 12, which is the next major movement of this prophecy in Revelation. And if you got your Bible, I want to invite you to join me. We're going to pick up at verse 1 and go through verse 6. It says, A great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed in the sun with the moon under her feet and a crown of 12 stars on her head. She was pregnant and cried out in pain as she was about to give birth. Then another sign appeared in heaven, an enormous red dragon with seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns on its heads. Its tail swept a third of the stars out of the sky and flung them to the earth. And the dragon stood in front of the woman who was about to give birth, so that it might devour her child the moment he was born. She gave birth to a son, a male child, who will rule the nations with an iron scepter. And her child was snatched up to God and to his throne. The woman fled into the wilderness to a place prepared for her by God, where she might be taken care of for 1,260 days. All right, let's dig back in because there's a lot here. We open up with this image of the woman that says, clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and the crown of 12 stars on her head. There's a little bit of debate on who this woman is. I will tell you that out of the Catholic Church, the belief is that this woman is Mary. Um, there, there's a few that, that go back and they even identify this woman as Eve, but that's a very, very few. Uh, they the Catholic Church identifies this as Mary because this is the one who gave birth to the Messiah. And clearly that's the one that is being referred to here as it talks about this child to be born who will rule with an iron scepter. He will rule the nations. He'll be snatched up to God. He'll, I mean, we have this image. This is indeed the Messiah. Um, the vast majority of those who spend their time in this book and, and understanding this prophecy and utilizing some of the Old Testament prophecies, especially Daniel that, that spends part of it, part of that book talking about the end times. Uh, the belief is that this is not Mary, but rather that this is the nation of Israel. Uh, the nation of Israel in numerous points in the Old Testament, especially in the books of prophecy, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, Hosea, um, Israel is referred to as a woman, much in the same way that uh, today the church is referred to as the bride of Christ. And so we talk about Israel and we talk about the image of the 12 stars, referring to the 12 tribes of Israel that we understand in the Old Testament. And when we hear about this woman, it, it, it's very pointed to talk in verse 2. She was pregnant and cried out in pain as she was about to give birth. So what's the significance of bringing forth this verse? And the answer is, is that as we look at Israel as the one that one from where the Messiah will be born, we look at a nation that has been under the dominion of the Persians, the Assyrians, now the Romans at the time of Jesus' birth. We, we look at a nation who has suffered much. And so it, it is in that place where there is great pain in, in the people of Israel. And that's what it's identifying in verse 2. And then we do a, a big shift in the story. It says, then another sign appeared in heaven, and there can be no mistake about who this is, an enormous red dragon with seven heads. So we have this image of the dragon, the image of Satan, the image of the one who will war against God and God's people. And certainly we heard, or heard that as we read through this passage that, that the dragon is there ready to devour this child because Satan realizes or recognizes the threat of this child. So it says, another sign appeared in heaven, an enormous red dragon with seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns on its heads. It swept... Its tail swept a third of the stars out of the sky and flung them to the earth. And the dragon stood in front of the woman who was about to give birth so that it might devour her child the moment that he was born. So I want to go back there and it says, Another sign appeared in heaven, an enormous red dragon with seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon its head. The, the seven crowns are not images of, of glory, but rather they're images of earthly dominance or earthly authority that, that comes by force. And the ten horns represent ten earthly or, or worldly powers that are working in alliance with, with the dragon. So we, we have this image of there will be those who will acknowledge the dragon, who will worship the dragon, who indeed are serving the 
uh, the aims of the dragon, and they will be earthly rulers. Um, no doubt those who uh, are, are rulers of nations. That's probably the most plausible, but I don't want to get uh, too deep into that because there have been some who have, you know, they, they've looked at certain alliances on the military scale and decided, oh, well, there's the 10 heads, there's the 10 nations, this has got to be it, this is the sign. Don't get bogged down in that. Again, John is bringing forth the, these prophetic images that are supposed to prepare us, that are supposed to warn us, that are supposed to guide us in our walk of faith. And if we are trying to continually fit the present day into the, the stories of the Revelation, we, we're going to get ourselves in trouble because we're going to start to see uh, we're going to start to see the dragon everywhere. And certainly throughout history, there has been that kind of an image that has been present. So. It says that the dragon stands before the woman who's about to give birth so that it might devour her child the moment that has been born. But she gave birth to a son, a male child, who will rule with an iron scepter. And this is a significant image that, that Christ's rule will be permanent. We, you could have a, a scepter that is of clay. You could have a scepter that is of, of wood. You have, or I shouldn't say a scepter, but you have images in, in the Old Testament and throughout the prophetic books that talk about clay, that talk about wood, that talk about iron. Um, and so we talk about the permanence of his rule here on the earth. It says he'll rule with an iron scepter. It says, and her child was snatched up by God into his throne. And so we have this image of indeed the Messiah walked upon the earth, he was crucified, but he rose again and he ascended and he reigns with the Almighty. And then in the interlude, in the intervening time, it says the woman fled into the wilderness to a place prepared for her by God where she might be taken care of for 1,260 days. 1,260 days representing the three and a half year image. Um, to understand, it, we're gonna look at this and we're gonna say, okay, well, uh, how does the three and a half years or the 1,260 days fit? Um, sometimes a, a day was equated to a year um, sometimes I, I, there were just there were so many different images of how these these numbers were used but I think here this is not trying to get us aiming at a number or doing a multiplying of a number but rather it's challenging us to look through the eyes of this is all within this seven year period of tribulation and, and so it wraps it in here and what what's present it says the woman fled into the wilderness so the child's taken up to heaven in this intervening time, and the woman flees into the wilderness to a place prepared for her by God. And this is something, when we think about wilderness, we're not talking about a, a, a desolate place that is absent of life or a place where there's the presence of evil, or, but rather the wilderness is a place where the Israelite people would have understood this is the place of God's provision. They would have looked back to the wilderness at the time of the escape from Egypt. And so, so there's a, a lot of parallels in this situation. So looking back and seeing that God's provision in the desert, and yes, initially they were, they were whining and complaining against God and saying, why have you brought us out here? And you know, you just simply brought us here to die. Um, certainly in our time of the wilderness, it's very easy for us to get focused on, well, circumstances are not all that we want them to be. I mean, we, we'd like to be in the presence of God, in the presence of heaven, and not enduring the evil of the earth at all. I mean, as, as God's church, as God's people in this day. Um, but we are called to be faithful, and we are called to continue being witnesses, and we are called to live under God's protection and under God's provision. And so that's what we strive to do. And so we have these images brought forth in just these first six verses of chapter 12. As we get together tomorrow, we are going to continue on as we talk about war breaking out in heaven and the effects of that war. I mean, I, I will warn you that there is, there's a lot of complication in this. And I just, I urge you to just walk with me and we, we're going to draw some images out of here. We're going to gain some understanding out of this, but we are not going to be able to explain every nuance and every detail to the point where we can say, well, this is what this is. This is what that is. This is... Um, it gets us in trouble when we try to look at prophecy through those eyes. It's very clear that John is using imagery to try to describe a scene that in human words is truly indescribable. He can't lay out exactly what's going to happen. 
The image in heaven is an image of what the end times will be like. So friends, let us just go on this journey. Let us trust that as we walk through this time, we will have greater understanding, greater growth, that the, the Spirit will be at work with us, that our minds and our eyes will be open so that when the time comes, we are indeed prepared. Uh, and the next time you have the opportunity to go through Revelation, whether on your own or, or as part of a study that we do, that that understanding will continue to grow as the Spirit continues to open to you and to me the message of Revelation. So friends, let us go forth this day as God's people, knowing always that God loves us. Praise be to God.